So this is going to be a little bit of a uh, random pick for a video today. We're doing Outlast, the very first one. Now, I really do not like Outlast. I don't find it scary. I don't find it fun. I don't find it engaging. But a lot of people always bring this up as like one of the better horror games to come out, like, uh, you know, like over the last 10 years. And I've always really disagreed with that. So, I don't want to just, like, make a video, like, shitting over a game. So, like, I'll compliment the game, like, where, you know, it needs its dues, and it will happen here and there. But I just wanted to make a video trying to explain and show why I don't think this is a very good game. And I'm going to show you, like, my mentality the first time I played this game. Because I bought this game the day it came out. And, I mean, I've played through it a few times now. Because uh, a lot of people always ask about this game. Like, on my stream and stuff, like, it's happened over the years, and just... People want to see it, like, when they're over, and I'm like, okay, I'll show you why I don't really like this. Um, but if you've never seen Outlast before, it's a first-person horror game. You can't attack back. It's, like, one of those run-and-hide ones. Um, you're an investigative journalist uh, following up on an email you got about some really terrible practices at this place here called Mount Massive. Uh, you go inside, and surprise, surprise, stuff's a little bit fucked up, yo. Just a tad bit. And I'm just gonna, you know, play it. Again, I'm not gonna, like, completely try and shit on it, but there's just, there's just, like, core stuff in the game that I really hate, and it prevents me from calling this a good game. Uh, the one thing I will say this game does very well, especially right now, is the intro. The intro is great, because, like, you're pulling up in the car, like, you kind of, like, have a motivation to be here. Um, you see the asylum, you know stuff's not quite right. And, like, it's a really cool intro. Like, I think the first, like, 10, 15 minutes of this game are by and far the best. And I think it really highlights what uh, this game could really be. There's a lot of text logs and things you can kind of get to. To figure out the story a bit more. I'm not going to go too heavy into the story. I will say the story is very interesting. It's a little bit off the rails. Um, but I would say it's, you know, at least, you know, somewhat interesting. That's cool with me. Well, let's just hop into it. Um, but yeah, Outlast Starts has a really, really cool intro. Um, and you kind of see the Mount Massive Asylum. And I would say from the outside, it's a lot more intimidating looking than what it is like on the inside. That is just me, though. I also gotta remember like how to uh, do this game as well. Because I'll be playing all the way through it. I should be able to. I can usually beat this game, like, in about an hour and a half. So, it shouldn't be a huge deal for me to just kind of, like, bum rush through this. Although, it's been about, like, a year and a half, two years since my last playthrough. So, we shall see. Basically, everything's locked. We have military vehicles on the outside. Stuff's looking very, very odd. So we are going to be a good investigative journalist following all the proper protocols, and we're going to be breaking in. Because, why not? And again, like, we have a uh, really, really cool, uh, like, little intro getting into here. When we first get in the asylum, it looks really cool. Um, everything, you know, yeah, that's right, you're also recording everything, technically. Jump scare, there we go. Uh, okay, so one of the first complaints I have about this game is its over-reliance with jump scares. This game tries to only get you with jump scares. And pretty much nothing else it feels like. I also have to be very careful because I need I really, really need to keep collecting batteries. Batteries are really, really important in this game for the uh, darker areas. How many do I have? Three. I'm going to try and stick around like seven to eight the entire game. Also, I'm not a speedrunner. Like, this is already like, you know... A lost speedrun. I don't really speedrun too much. Jump scare number two. Okay. We've been playing this for about three minutes. Jump scare number three. <laughs> like I said, like, this game's over-reliant on the jump scares. Okay, he's going in there. Well, I'm trying to find, like, a, uh, another battery. I don't think I can get one yet. But yeah, this game's very reliant on them. Alright, jump scare number four. <laughs> like, they just do so many. Like I said, like, it just kind of gets annoying to me. Just the amount this game hammers at you. But, uh, now the intro's done. We're officially in the asylum. 
Um, I mean, technically we're still in the intro, but I would say this is kind of like, you know, where the game really begins. But again, the game has a really cool look to it. The story is really, really cool. Um, yeah, like, you'll see some cool stuff in this game. Like, you are going to see some really cool stuff in this game, but I just feel like the game fails at being a good game. Oh my god, I don't know, like, why I just want to make this video today. I just, I just kind of did. It's Thanksgiving, I'm spending it alone at home. Screw it, let's get some batteries. There should be one right back here. Yep. I think there's also one on this. Uh, nope, just the document. I'll just take the document, screw it. Is there really no other battery over here? I guess not. Oh, uh, I think there's a battery in here, though. I just really, really want to stop. Nope, just a log. I just really want to stock up on them as much as I can at the moment. Because I know the second I start really getting heavy into the commentary, I am going to forget. Alright. Got the enemies of the asylum watching. Take your pass, thank you. There should be a battery under here. One thing that's really cool though is uh, this game has like a pretty cool speedrunning community to it. I'll say that. This game's really broken. But thank god, I feel like a lot of horror games are super broken. Jump at me. Jump scare five. We go back up this way. I also did this, I feel like, a little bit out of sequence. I think this is a little bit out of sequence, at least. Alright, we got you. Technically six jump scares now. Is this just gonna be like a jump scare counting video? Probably. I just swear there was a battery in there. Okay, that's the next big room we gotta be in. But I'm not anxious to get in there quite yet. Not yet. Because again, we're on a little bit of a battery hunt. Is there really nothing in here? I guess not. I don't know why I thought there was. Like I said, it's been a while since I played this. Whatever. We get in here. Now we're going to learn about running and hiding in a second. Out goes the power. And in comes the baddie. We hide. We're good at the tutorial here. We're rocking it. Hmm. Stuff like this is, like, really well done. Like, I feel like they have, like, a really nice intensity to it. But I'm gonna show you in this upcoming part, like, where Outlast really lost me. Because, like, nothing here so far is actually bad. Uh, mind you, a lot of the stuff I think to a lot of people would be very terrifying. Uh, to those that have never played this game before or watched it before. I'm really desensitized to this game. I, in fact, you'll probably get desensitized to this game, like, about a third of the way through. It's not a knock against it, but it's just like a very jump scare reliant sort of thing. Yeah, whatever. Um, but the atmosphere and everything in this game is really well done. 
But I'm about to show you the big fatal flaw this game has. And one that I figured out very, very early on. Which kind of ruined any scare potential this game had to me. You're going to see it right now. I may die doing this. I'm not going to lie. That's fine. But in this game, you just kind of live by holding sprint. It is very, very tough to die in this game if you're running. Because you are faster than every single enemy. And there's only one enemy in this game that can one-hit you. One and only one. Outside of that, you can just tank a little bit of damage and you're fine. Now, I remember the first time I was playing this game, this part terrified me. I'm like, this is... Some of the most horrifying stuff I've ever dealt with in a video game. <laughs> but now I'm like, I hold shift, I can't die. It's like, okay. But yeah, as long as you're not getting frequently hit, they're only usually throwing one enemy at you. And only one. And outside of that, like, you are good. Like, you are safe. And that's like the first entire, like, main sequence of the game. And, to me, again, that's where Outlast started to fail me. I figured out that this is what you could do during that one engagement in my first playthrough. And that's when I stopped even thinking about trying to do the entire hiding system. And again, outside of one enemy, I never had to. So I feel like a lot of the intensity in this game was completely lost on me. Completely lost. Which is, it's so shitty because look how cool this is! It's so cool! Like, we got poltergeists and shit. We got, we got like, inmates breaking out that have experiments done on them. This asylum looks dirty as all hell. The lore is so cool. It just fails at being a game. <laughs> Yet it's a game I can't stop playing. I know people can be like, well, you're kind of hypocritical. Like, this is probably like your 8th or ninth run through this game. Maybe 10th. I've, I've lost count. How can you say you hate this game if you keep playing it? And I think a big thing is... I do this with movies too, right? Uh, I most notably do this with Jurassic Park 3. There are some things that I want to love so much that I'm willing to keep trying it again and again and again and knowing I'm just going to be disappointed in the hopes that eventually it's freaking amazing to me. I forget like what you do here. Thank you. Alright. Alright, Twitch police not gonna like the dudes. Th th they have their junk out. Okay. But we didn't see him, so it's good. These people are happy. Which room was it? Is it down here? Uh, yeah. Is this it? No. Uh, let's see. One of these rooms has a jump scare, though. I just can't remember which one. There it is. That's not the jump scare one. Okay. Hi, how you doing? Having fun fucking a corpse. I don't want to go this way. 
No? New. This way. Okay. Making some good progress, though. But, alright, so, okay, what was I saying before? Oh yeah, I just want to keep playing these games, because I want to just eventually like them. I think I like Outlast 2 a bit more, which is weird, because most people say Outlast 2 is by and far the worst one. Um, but I kind of like Outlast 2, and I think the DLC for this game, Whistleblower, is actually really good. I think the Whistleblower DLC is, like, everything this first game should have strived to be. So, like, not all of Outlast, like, in the entire series is bad. At all. I would just say it's a little bit underwhelming. Um, or very underwhelming. This one, I would just I just qualify the first main game as bad. I'll write this part. I know where we're at. Okay. Okay, this actually might kill me. Maybe. We're gonna see. No, I'm actually alive. Okay. If this is a harder difficulty, that would have killed me. There we go. Like, you can play this game on a harder difficulty, and, like, you won't be able to get away with doing that stuff anywhere near as much, but you can still kind of do it. Like, it ain't impossible. But I'm pretty sure I've even done Nightmare, and I was able to kind of, like, run through most of this. Albeit slightly more carefully, I believe. Okay. Hello, goodbye, you're dead. Okay, now we can go in the shower room. There we go. Excellent. I go for a nice shower right now. There we go. Okay. But yeah, this is actually like almost identical to like how my first playthrough of this game went at this point. Like, not even lying. Well, again, once I figured out like you could just kind of run through everything, I know I gotta press that button, but I'm trying to see if I can find another battery. Doesn't look like it. Brent, I haven't even used a full battery yet. But there is a very dark part of this game coming up soon. That is not where I'm supposed to go. I figure where I'm supposed to go. Through here. There we go. But yeah, that's kind of like how my first playthrough went. This is a cool little scene, though. Sup. Goodbye. La 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 la. Hope this is the right way. I think it is. 
<laughs> yeah, it says. Okay. Uh, I think this is a jump scare here. Maybe. No, this is. Jump scare time. Say hi. <laughs> oh my god. There's so many of them. We actually got a few on this floor, too. What's up? That's a little bit dramatic. So I was meant to show that if you get near the bars, you're gonna get grabbed. I think I get grabbed here, yeah. I really do wish this game was way more focused on, like, on the atmosphere and, like, how, like, you know, freaking brutal this place is. Rather than just the whole jump scare thing. Like, honestly and truly, because I feel like the atmosphere is so good. But I feel like they really wasted a lot of potential here. By just saying, hey, you know what? Jump scare, jump scare, jump scare. Where do I go here? Is that a battery? Yes! Cool. I will say, though, the one jump scare that did get me was the one where, I, uh, like, a minute or two ago, where I was like, this guy's gonna poke his head out around the wall. That one actually did get me. That one actually got me pretty good. Like, I did dig that one quite a bit. Also, the constant flashing bothers you. I'm sorry. I'm just trying to conserve battery. Because you can run out of them, like, really quick. Even on normal, if you're not careful. I'm also very good at, like, just getting lost. I think there was, like, a... Oh, no, 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 this hole in the wall. Is this it? No, what even is this? I forget. Oh, that's where I started. Was there a door? I can't remember. It has been ages. Wait, did I crouch? Oh, I crouched through this. Duh. I thought that was graded off for some reason. I don't know why. Here we go. Oh, right. This part. I forgot this part was actually a thing. I, or, no, I didn't forget this part was a thing. I just thought it was way later on. Hey, dude. Hit me. Thank you. Goodbye. Happy Thanksgiving. So close yet so far. Oh my god, you actually got me. I can't believe you actually got me. I've never been grabbed through that before. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, it's fine. Because we do this, we just get our health back anyways. Because, like, that's the start of the area. So long, as long as I'm out of there, as long as I crawl through here, he can't get me. Now I can go back in with full health. Who 
little sir. You're looking fabulous today. Goodbye. Now, where is... Oh, I went too far. Oh, I was actually in the right spot to turn off the next valve. I didn't. Oopsie. Hit me. Thank you. You can't reach me. Get out of here, you little shit. Oh, no, this, this is actually the valve, isn't it? I was actually where the valve was. I'm a dummy. Yeah, this is it. I was actually looking at the door for it. Oops. Silly me. Let him go by really quick, so I don't feel like getting hit and getting chased here. <laughs> Never mind. We'll just watch his foot. But I think it also like speaks volumes about like kind of like the enemy AI and like how they handle chasing. The thing is, they don't handle it very good. There we go. Again, like, I'm not, like, very, like, threatened. Because, again, like, I run faster than everybody. So, like, the threat level's, like, really low. It's whatever. It's just kind of, like, easy to get turned around sometimes. But you know, Biggie. How far in are we now? Cause I feel like we're already like a are we like a third of the way through already. I think we might be. What's up, bro? How you doing, buddy? Any other batteries in the round for me? You got anything? Bye. Goodbye. Hello. Yeah, like this atmosphere is really really cool I've said it like 90 times this video but like it's true and it's like the one compliment like I feel like I can safely give at this is the fact that this game really built its settings so well but I almost feel like this would be like one of those things that would work better as a movie these parts are like in different orders than I remember though. Like the part we just did, I thought that actually happened way later game. Along with this part too. I thought this part was way later game. I don't know why. So it's kind of like weirding me out a bit.
Because there should be a big dude down there. Shut. Is this it? If we got our big dude here. Sup. Thank you, now I'm past you. No, I'm not. Wait, are you actually as fast as me? Oh, you actually might be as fast as me in the water, come to think of it. Or I was running into a wall, maybe. I could have been running into a wall. Okay. I actually died. Feels good, man. Can I just run by you? Can, like, you not, like, body block me? Thank you. No! <laughs> He's so rude. See, I don't remember, like, being slower in this section. That's the thing. Like, I just... I don't remember being slower. Okay, all I gotta do is get up that staircase. There we go. Easy routing. Just had to be smart. We're good. What's up, bro? Can I run through you? Like, you not hit me. It's so rude. But, if this is the part I'm thinking of, we might be getting to like the really, really cool part of this game in a minute. It's simultaneously super annoying, but also really, really cool. And it's probably my favorite part of the entire game. If it's the part I think it is. We're gonna find out. Hello. <laughs> Where are we supposed to go? I don't think I was actually supposed to unblock that door. Up here. Oh. Maybe I'm supposed to unblock that door. I forget. I forget a lot of things about this game. I just kind of go with the flow. I'm pretty sure this is the part I think it is. <laughs> Finding documents, but no batteries. And to me, that is just... Hey, look, a battery! I'll say that's unforgivable, but you know what? I forgive the game now. 
I found the goods. Oh, the vent. Here we go. Close that. We'll push this in front. Like so. We'll push this one away. Yep, this is the part I thought it was. It's leading to like the really, really cool cinematic part of this game. Oh wait, through this. And over this. Through that. Don't call me a slippery little whore. One thing I'll say about like the casual playthrough of this game, like my first ever playthrough, I mean this is technically kind of casual. I just know what I'm doing, so whatever. Let me in! Thank you. Um, the one thing I'll say about this game that really, really sucked from like a new player perspective was that you kind of had to know like what you were doing to uh. <laughs> Like, actually get through some of these chases. Like, that one in particular, like, you had to route, like, a very specific way. You had to, like, go, like, through a very specific, like, you know, set of motions. And if you didn't do it correctly, you slow down a little bit. You kind of got killed. And, like, this game has a few of those parts. But here's a really cool part. This dude's really cool. Um, but his section of the game is actually a little bit of a grind. I hate his chase. A lot. But it's not a big deal. Not a big deal at all. But I would say this is probably the coolest character in the game. I also believe this is like the halfway point of the game. I think. You know, I love the mountain air up here at night. You, you want to head out and take a stroll? <laughs> Go ahead, I'll eat here. He's a nice guy, though, all things considered. Grindstone, I like that. Okay, then, right this way. Mm -hmm. Nice spot. But yeah, this part's like 10 minutes long. Not even, not, maybe not quite 10 minutes, but it does take a while. But hopefully this video has been like super bitchy towards this game. I just, I just keep like driving home the point that like nothing in this game really feels dangerous. Like sure, I died twice in the water. But uh, I kind of forgot I could die to him in the water. I kind of forgot like he kind of moved a little bit faster. Which I mean happens. I don't even like recall that being a thing, to be honest. But I'm literally just holding shift and winning. Which is what it is. so much for coming by. We'll begin your consultation in a moment. We'll just need a second to wash up and, uh... And actually, this is the halfway point in the game. If you look up a chapter list, this is already halfway. It's not a very long game. But if, you're, if, you don't, if you don't know what you're doing, like, you're actually afraid in this game, this game could take, like, eight hours. If you hold shift to win, like, you'll beat it, like, in an hour and a half. It's not a big deal. That last two, I think, was a lot longer. 
But Outlast 2 had like a lot more of these kind of like big cutscene story heavy sections, which really slowed the game down. Just grab your scissors out of the urinal, buddy. Just do it. There we go. That's the good stuff. Nice massage, at least. There we go. We've broken free, we've done good. We're gonna everything out of our system. You're fine. Actually, listen to him. You can't control this. No release. Nobody. Nobody. He'll find you. He'll kill you. Hold up there right now. Oh, he found me. Interesting. Okay. But here we go. Another section where I'm just fa where I'm just faster. <laughs> I know I gotta get a key to the elevator. Hello, goodbye. There's the elevator. There's a key. Where is it? Let's just let's try and loop him. I mean, I played Dead by Daylight. I know in order to get away from the bad guy, all you gotta do is loop him. And I mean, sure, he's getting bloodlust right now as we speak, but it's not a big deal. He's actually kind of a nice guy, you know? I've always kind of like hated this part. So I can just never find that key. I don't know why. I just never find it. So I always like stumble here for like 10-15 minutes. Until I go, oh, there's the key. I know it's like behind a desk. Like a reception desk. Then I go right to the elevator. It's like cool. There it is. Later. You nerd. This is the way. That is not the way. 
Sorry for stealing your shit, dude. Because sometimes I get lost. Like, surely you understand. There we go. We're good. How'd you even get below me, sir? One thing I'll give the- okay, here's one thing I'm gonna give a lot of credit to this game for. Where most games would give you a terrible, terrible quick time event, like an awful quick time event, this game just doesn't do that. This game just quite literally says, here's the scene we're playing it out. There's like two quick time events in this game. Two or three. And like, it's just shake the mouse, it's like not a big deal. So full credit where credit's due to this game for that. Because I feel like games do way too much in terms of quick time events. And have for a long time now. So I'm not like actually bombarded by them. I get very, very happy. Alright, well now we got another... Uh, big baddie section. Where I know we're gonna have to like turn some valves again. So, oh my god, that's bright. <laughs> Holy crap. Wait, I'm just to climb through this, right? Yeah. So the valve section actually isn't it yet. I thought it was now. So much of this game is it's just a much different order than I remember. It's so weird. Oh, it is the part I think it is. I just didn't... I thought I went through the fire last. Okay. Okay, now we're gonna get the sprinkler system. Okay. We're gonna have a big bad here to chase me. Bye. Well, you can't get me. Nice bad thing there. Here's a valve one. And just like typical valves, there's only two of them. Now, number two is down here. This I thought it was. This is it. Two. Stop, hit me. Thank you. I'll just do this just to kind of get my health back. I got a little bit overzealous. again. I also just like showing that I'm the alpha. The alpha getting turned around, but still the alpha. Sorry, dude. All 
I really don't mean to flex on you right now with my sophisticated, excellent, incredible running. Like a bitch, mind you. It's not my intention at the moment. But can you please go away because I gotta go back through there to hit the switch? There we go. Oh, he actually got me? God damn it. I got, like, really greedy. I got very impatient. <laughs> it's on me. Now where's it gonna- oh. It check- that was like a fucking skip. It checkpointed me once I hit the button. That's just lovely. And put my battery back to full. Cool. I should be using my night vision more. Is that a battery? No. That's just burning embers. Okay. What's up? Okay. Whatever you say, game. Is some other battery here, maybe, now? Nothing. Okay. Really nice, delightful people in this old asylum. Only completely traumatized. What was I supposed to do here, though? Or was I not supposed to be in here? Oh, dog right here. There we go. Is there a battery here? No, just, just lore. Okay. Well, now that we're in this spot, this spot is very easy to get lost in, if you can't already guess that bit. It's also very dark. We gotta get a key to get through there, and that's how we get to Father Martin. Right. Right, 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 right. Let's come back to me. There's like a side path. No, there should be a jump scare coming up. Yeah, there we go. 
Okay. What are we at now? Like 20 jump scares, maybe? A lot of them. Uh, which, again, kind of goes back to my original point with this game. They overdo them. The point where you're just kind of, like, expecting it. Like, at all times, and you just... It doesn't do much. It's like, okay. It's another one. And the second game's Guilty of a 2, and even Whistleblower, which I actually dig, is very, very guilty of it as well. They're all guilty. You know, whatever. Like, that's like their style, that's what they want to do. But. But I will stand by them, kinda sorta overdoing it by a lot. If I recall correctly, there's like a, um, I think it's like a battery, like, on the ground over here somewhere. I think. So, like, partially looking at the ground partially just trying to remember like where I gotta go. go. Cool, man. Wait, is this where I just was? I can't remember. I feel like this is where I just was. No! Sir! Sir, I gotta go down there. So I'm gonna make you run and chase me for a little bit. Just so I get full health again. And then I'm going through that. I'm not sure if you know this, but my uncle works in Nintendo. There we go. It's never just as easy as going through the door, you know? Why would it be? Thank you. Okay. Oh, here's some boxes. Now we get in the female ward. Yeah, it's already part 6 out of 8 in this game. I was like, do I really want to commit to this game all the way through? But, like, I'm at the point now where I think I basically already have.
Here we go. Man, now we're like really like late game. Like it really is shocking like when you know like what you're doing in the game like how quick you can get ri uh, right through it. Now we got to find the fuses which aren't that bad to find if I remember correctly. It's not too bad at all. What's up? Just taking my stuff, goodbye. Have fun. Two. Now we're gonna find number three, which I believe is actually in the fuse room itself. Well, right here, actually. Yeah, it's right here. Yep, three. What's up? Later. Took a wrong turn, sorry. Just gonna push right back on through you. <laughs> oh my god. This is it. No, it's not. We know this isn't it, is it? Yeah, it is. Now we're gonna go all the way to the bottom. To go to the laundry chute. Took a wrong turn, Albuquerque again. Unfortunate. Maybe it wasn't this far down. Laundry. No, that's bathroom. Was well, sure there's laundry. Thank you. We're actually getting really close to the, um, one enemy in this game that can, like, actually, like, one-shot you. We're really close to it. Okay. You know, not what I wanted to do. Can't lie. Um, no, this wasn't the way out. So now we're back at the fuses. Here it is. That's where we gotta be. There we go. Silly YouTuber, always taking the wrong turn. <laughs>
There we go. I didn't snap onto the wall for some reason. We're good now. We Gucci. I was getting to like a really cool part of the game as well. Like a really, really cool part in my opinion. In my professional, I have played video games before opinion. Like I said, like I hate this game, but like it's not all bad. Like there are parts of this game I do enjoy to like an extent. I don't know why I didn't think I could jump on that. Oops. What? I don't want to talk about it. I'm chewing through batteries now, though. Which ain't great. But the game's so dark. But sometimes you kinda just gotta, you know? Let's go, because we got another battery. That's all we need in life. Okay, and here are the dudes that can kill you one shot. If these dudes catch you, you're dead. So we actually do want to bait these ones out a little bit. Because I gotta go where they were. But again, uh, they're like the one, uh, they're the one enemy in this game that can totally one hit me. Which in my opinion is actually really cool. I actually have to uh, put, a little, uh, put in a little bit of an effort to not get hit by them. I also think it's like a nice curveball by the game to do that. To finally give like one enemy. That like, you know, I actually have to fear a little bit and just kind of, you know, be like, whoa, gonna take it easy now. It's nice. But that's not the cool part of the game. It, that is a part of the game, but not my favorite. Because I only appear once. There's two dudes with their junk out. Like, okay. There it is. That camera we've been uh, so attached to this entire game to help us find our way throughout this entire... Uh, Entire asylum is now gone. So we can't go through there. So now we got to go get our camcorder. Which leads us into a brand new kind of hell. Because we need it. Because how again, how can we go through the darkness without it? Speaking of the darkness, darkness is a really cool game. I should uh, make a video on that one. Or an entire playthrough on it. Okay. Man, these fellows over here seen a camera. Oh, 
Oh, yeah, by the way, there's a bunch of dudes in this room with me. They just didn't want to reveal that. <laughs> Until we got this. Now we got, like, the shattered glass. We got the thing acting up. I thought this part was, like, really, really cool. Because, like, in this game, like, the camera is, like, an extension of you. In a way, you know? Like, in this odd, odd little way. It's like, I really appreciate it. I shouldn't have reloaded yet. So, yeah, like, I just really appreciated the whole camera sequence here. Which is a very tiny little detour in the grand scheme of the game. go down these hallways. I can remember if the movie theater is a part of this game or not. I think it is. I can remember if that's like this or Whistleblower or 2 or an entirely different game. Where do I go from here? Because I can't make that, can I? No. Oh, because I didn't have to do any of that. Oh. But now I'm just, like, struggling to remember, like, if a part in this game is actually in this game or not. Don't mind me. Hello. Only one way. How do you know you're not a patient? Maybe it's not actually. Is it? far in. I don't think it is. I don't think so. What you doing? Just chilling? And now we're back at the start of the game. Back in the old admin block, huh? More or less. That's where I got called the little pig. Oh, it is a theater. Behind the light, so it means like behind the projector. If that like already wasn't like a ab like abundantly clear. Okay. I can't believe I'm just gonna get on one sitting this game. I just kind of like said at the start like maybe I would, but I think I'd actually get through this game this quick, and like the last chapter is really short. Like, really, really short. Like, I think I probably have, like, another 15 or 20 minutes left in this entire game. Because, like, even with five batteries, I could probably live through the rest of this game with five. Okay. 
not gonna lie, I've also kind of like just ran out of things to discuss with this game at this point. So we can't do that. Now well, this door is open, which means we can just uh, shimmy on sham down here, huh? But, okay, so here's what I'm going to say right now, like, as I'm doing this playthrough again. The one thing I will say that I appreciate a lot in this game at the moment is how it introduces mechanics and how you grow attached to certain mechanics, like, pretty heavily. I will say they handle that very, very well. You get attached to the camera, they kind of, like, introduce certain things, like blocking doors. They have you do that, like, once or twice before it actually comes into play. Um, the hiding system, like... I mean, sure, that was like a tutorial and a half, but like, you know, it showed you the, why you want to maybe consider doing it. Um, they gradually just kind of like introduce like all the concepts of this game, like really slowly. But like in a way that made like a good amount of sense. There we go. Like, I do think they did a very, very good job of, like, introducing mechanics. Like, I have no complaints about that. I just wish there was a better feeling of danger. Just shut me out. Bullshit. I know there's a vent here. There we go. Like that does lock me out. Hmm. Where do I go right now? I'm a very forgetful person this entire game. And these doors are locked. Is it this one? Pokia, no. No, I do not. Game, yeah, I'm gonna need you to like scratch my back really quick. Cause I'm looking like a moron on the internet. And we can't have none of that. See, I could have swore the store was open. Like, I could have swore the door is just open. Oh, here, it's this one. Okay. Now, I think there's actually an outside window I gotta find. Like, almost certain I gotta kind of, like, find a way to sneak out. Here we go.
Maybe I like do have to like interrupt one of these. I forget. There it is. That seemed right. Sup. I just, I remember there being an enemy there. Another cool scene time. My job. You alone shall escape the Talfa. This is your penultimate act of witness. The promise of the prophets was always freedom from death. And, and here it is. You will watch and record my death, my resurrection. And together we will be free. Fix the elevator. It will take you to freedom. We will all of us be free. Now, my son. Okay. Later, fellas. He's looking good. He's doing good. He's hanging in there. What a champ. Now he's going to get to the elevator. However we get to that, obviously. When in doubt, vent it out. Yep. I knew we got chased somewhere. There's just like so many like locations like in this place where you get chased that it's hard to like remember like which ones you do get chased and which ones you don't. There's a lot. But we good. Played a nerd. Elevator time. And on to the final chapter of this game we go. Yo, keep going. Who wants to go out? That camera effect here, though, is so weird. I'll take this, thank you. Also, I will say this too, like, if this game actually looks kind of okay to you, uh, and you've always been kind of curious about it. Uh, I mean, it's still worth picking up and playing, like, if you think this looked okay. Because, I mean, I skipped, like, everything plot-wise. I read none of the lore. I barely searched a lot of the rooms. There's, like, a lot of stuff to, like, see and read in this game, especially in terms of lore. And you've played on Nightmare Mode. Like, there's actually, you know, there is, like, a degree of challenge here. But there are, like, a lot, a lot of notes and, like, a lot, a lot of lore things. Like, these are just the ones I've picked up, you know. 
And there's like a lot to kind of like read in on. So. And like every now and then like if you use your camera like you get like a little bit of lore like in your notes section and stuff so. Even seeing me play all the way through it like there's like still like fun to be had with this. If this looks like your kind of thing. Like, don't take my ringing, like, you know, condemning of this game super seriously. It's just not my thing. I just kind of, just kind of like, wanted to make the video to explain why not, I didn't like it. And I think I've kind of, like, proven my point that you just kind of, you just hold shift. And this is why I did my entire, again, this is why I did my entire first playthrough. Like, this isn't, like, something I figured out, like, after beating it, like, a time or two. Like, this is something I did pretty much on my first ever attempt here. But I would say, though, it's really, really worth getting a Whistleblower. If you buy Outlast 1, it's worth getting the DLC for Whistleblower, because it kind of sets up why this game even happened, or how this game kind of sort of happened in a way. Like, how the email that brought Miles here, our main character, into uh, the fray. Like, it, it kind of explains a lot in terms of the lore. If that is your thing. Because I just don't want to, like, make this video, like, end off, like, on, like, a really, really negative note towards this game, even though I hate it. Oh yeah, there's also someone named Billy, and he's kind of like, uh, the little ghosty dude that's been kind of chasing us around a bit. And he's kind of like stuck like in a permanent stream of like subconscious and stuff. It's weird. But, uh, we're gonna go kill him. That's at least the plan. We go down here and we're just gonna we're just gonna kill him. Alright, so I gotta get in this chamber. Oh, it's this door. No, it's not. What's up? Dude, I gotta, I gotta go kill you, okay? Do you not understand what it means to, like, I need to kill you? I've actually never died to him before. Nor have I ever got lost in this section before. I'm just a very lost person today. I'm a lost soul. After this entire video recording process is done, I am making myself some chicken alfredo. And I am curling up, and I am watching, like, Thanks Killing, the amazing $1,000 budget film about a gigantic killer turkey. And no one's gonna be able to stop me. You got a bubs. Oh, I was just squeezed there. It just wasn't working. Okay. I wasn't being that much of a dummy. Excellent.
Okay, if I really want to see him, uh, if I put on night vision, I believe I see him a lot easier. If memory serves correcto. Here we go. Coffee, it's a good mug. I'd actually buy a mug that just has coffee on it. Make no mistake. Hi, Billy. I'm gonna go kill you now. Once I remember the proper order of operations, I'll be killing you. The problem was remembering the proper order of operations. Okay, so what's really cool about this ending bit is just how bright things are at the moment. I think stuff gets dark again at some point. But this is like such a huge contrast to the rest of like the game. Where everything's like so dark and gritty, and this is just like so clean and like sterile looking. It's a really cool contrast to kind of try and finish up, like, uh, finish off the game, and I can kind of appreciate that. There he is. See, so you don't see him, you turn on night vision, you see him. That's a nice touch as well. I didn't notice that in my first playthrough. And then someone told me about that, and I went, oh, yeah. I guess that does work. But you know, cool. Now we get another valve, and we're gonna basically just be killing Billy here. Basically ending his life, pulling off the life support. It's a lot of stairs, man. We got some darkness here. Cool. I don't think Billy liked me doing that. Not gonna, not gonna lie to you. I don't think he was a fan. Ah, wrong button. I got like everything bound to my mouse in this game. Besides like reload. It's so rude, Billy. Maybe not, Rude. This is a really good, like, little ride. And look, I'm only in moderately more pain than your typical Six Flags roller coaster. No biggie. I missed some lore. Oh well. Not like I'm gonna read it.
New objective, get out. It's all me move. Oh, now it is. There we go. That was weird. It wasn't letting me move. <laughs> We're good. Before I get out, though, we got the sweet lore. I'm sure I'll make it back to my car just, just fine. I only got multiple broken bones, a lot of blood loss, uh, probably a lot of stress. Uh, we're definitely infected considering we got uh, our fingers cut off by scissors, you know, in a urinal. Hey, what am I saying? Piss is sterile. It's totally how it's, it's, he's fine. At least his shoes still look good. Almost there. Truth be told, this is over like 95% of the game's length. Just walking back to the car. And dead. All that work just to be shot. But that's the entirety of Outlast 1. That's it. But I guess, like, in closing, I just... Outlast 1, I feel like, just has, like, such a cool atmosphere and so much cool stuff going for it, but just as a video game... One last time, because the video's over. One last time. I just think it fails at being a fun video game and, and an engaging horror experience. Because it has an over-reliance on jump scares. All the main segments amount to doing the same thing. Turn two valves, find three fuses, push this button, go through here. Enemies can't- enemies are slower than you. All of them take multiple hits besides one. Um... Certain areas require a very specific route, like there's really like no straying from that route, and if you don't know what you're doing, you're going to get yourself killed. Uh, the game's incredibly dark and relies on getting the batteries non-stop, so you're basically playing the game like it's a Paris Hilton porno for like 95% of the game. You know, like it's just, there are so many things about the game design of this that I just don't like, and it sucks, because I love like the story of it, I love the look of it, it even feels okay to play. It just sucks as a video game. <laughs> I don't know. Like, my first playthrough, like, when I figured out, oh, if I hold shift, no one's ever gonna catch me? Once I figured that out, like, the game was done to me. Like, I stopped being scared. I got through it. I think my first playthrough of this game was, like, three and a half hours long, maybe, if that, not even. And I just did this game for the first time, like, in two years, without even watching any of it, outside of a buddy of mine, twitch.tv slash Smile. Uh, do like a uh, run that only takes place at the start of the game called 10 Batteries. Like that's the most I've actually really watched of it like in two years. And even then like I was able just to kind of like hold shift and get through the entirety of the game in like an hour and a half, an hour 40. With like four deaths. Granted I did on normal, there's like three difficulties I had in normal. But um, with the exception of Nightmare Mode, like they all kind of amount to being the same thing. That's the thing. Like, none of them really amount to being much more. At least in my opinion, in terms of difficulty. Nothing crazy. Nightmare is different. Nightmare is... A little bit more spicy. Where I wouldn't be able to just, like, run headfirst into enemies and be like, let me through, please. Wouldn't be able to do that. But you can still just kind of... Just kind of, like, you know, 
run wide around them, basically, if I remember correctly. This game's not gonna load, is it? We're just kinda stuck at the loading screen? Eh, whatever. It's kinda like my brain right now, just trying to come up with, like, any more closing thoughts. But yeah, uh, it's Outlast. I did the entire game for one video on Thanksgiving, because why not? Um, I wish I liked it. I like the DLC, the whistleblower, like, that's really good. And I thought 2 was okay for what it was. It wasn't great, but I played Release 2. Release 2 was, I think, actually a lot better than, like, um, Patch 2, because I think they eased up the difficulty with patches. I played it day one all the way through, and people said it was way too difficult. And I was like, it's not. <laughs> this one was actually, the 2 was actually threatening on release, but I think they kind of changed it. But, eh, whatever. Uh, Outlast. It's a game. I wish I liked it. Hopefully, like, watching it kind of shows my, my problems with it. It might, it might not. I was nowhere near close enough to my mic for this entire ending rant, but you know what? Whatever. Um, but that's gonna do it for me. Thank you all for watching, and toodles, y'all.